In this video, I'll define rendering and demonstrate Maya's render view and render settings windows, and also how to start a batch render. The demo file for this video is on the class blog. Be sure to set your project. What is rendering? Rendering in a CG context is using a computer to convert wireframe models and lighting information to 2D images. Go ahead and open your scene file. You should see some bananas on a blue table with some lights around them. Lights. First, let's do a simple test render. In Maya, you can see a render of your scene by first opening the render view window and then clicking the render button. Or you can just click the render button. These buttons are located here, the top middle of your screen. This one on the left will open the render view window. This one right beside of it will open the render view window and render the scene you're looking at at the same time. Go ahead and click that. You should see some bananas on the table. Uh, by default, this will render a scene in the Maya software renderer. There are two renders that will be renderers that we'll be using, Maya Software and Mental Ray. Today we'll talk about Maya Software. Uh, let's talk about some features of the render view window. Render view is mainly used for creating test renders. Generally, the workflow is to render something, make an adjustment, re-render it, and then repeat. You can re-render a part of your scene instead of the whole frame by dragging in the rendered area. I'll just drag a box around these bananas, for example. We'll see a red rectangle appear. And then if I want to only render the part inside the rectangle, I can click this button here with the red square around it. If I want to re-render the whole scene, we'll click this clapper and notice this is the same as the button in the main interface. You can choose to keep a render available in this window for comparison purposes. Uh, to do this, you just have to click this green button. And when you do that, you'll see a scroll bar appear at the bottom. Uh, you can use this scroll bar to cycle between your renders. All of mine look the same, so you're not going to see any difference. But if you were to move the camera and render, you can cycle between them. Uh, comparing a test render to a current render, to an older render, excuse me, is a good way to evaluate your scene and to evaluate the progress you're making in terms of making it look the way you want. If you want to get rid of one of these renders, you can just click this trash button beside the green button. If you see this error pop up, cannot remove the current image from render view. That means you have to pick one of the previous ones. So this is the current render. If I cycle over here, I can remove this and you'll see the scroll bar gets bigger because there's only two images now. At the bottom of the render view window, there are there's some information about your render. The size in pixels, the zoom, whether or not you're seeing all of the pixels in the image, which renderer was used to render it, which frame was rendered, how long it took to render that frame, and which camera was rendered. If you want to make sure you're viewing this image at 100%, you can use this one-to-one -one button here. You'll notice that by default, if I resize this, Maya will resize the image along with it. Now I'm at 0.65 non zoom. If I want to be sure I'm seeing every pixel, I can just click one to one. And now I'm back to a zoom level of one. You can also zoom into these images using the scroll wheel here. Normal Maya controls apply. To go back to one to one, just click that button. Okay, so this is fine for saving a single image, but let's say I'm doing an animation and I'd like to have Maya render, uh, I don't know, 100 frames, and I don't want to sit here and hit render 100 times and name 100 images, which no one wants to do. Uh, luckily, there's a solution to this called batch rendering. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. To do a batch render, you're going to make sure you're in the rendering menu set, which I already am. The render menu and then batch render is here. It has options, but you're probably not going to change these. You're pretty much always going to want to use all available processors. If I hit batch render and close, Maya will show me a saving dialog. It saves an extra copy of your scene to render from. It saves that in the temp directory, by the way, so you'll not find that in your scenes directory. 
Uh, when I hit batch render, you'll notice at the bottom right, there's a status. It tells me it started, you saw some percentages, and then it tells me when the render is complete. Whenever you do a batch render, the image that you've rendered ends up in your images folder inside your project directory. This is my project directory, here's my images folder. Here's the thing I just rendered. So what if I want to name something else? What if I don't want it to be an IFF? This is where we'll use the render settings window. You can get to that here at the top, the clapper with the two dots, or you can go to window, rendering editors, render settings. Let's just start this kind of from the top down. Uh, render layer set to master layer. Um, we probably won't use render layers in this class, but this is one way to organize your rendering into different passes that can then be composited together later to make a complete image. Render using Maya software in this case. We'll be using either the Maya software renderer or the mental ray renderer in this class, and this is where you choose which one. Let's stick it, uh, let's leave it on Maya software for now. Um, I've noticed this happen in my version of Maya. Whenever I choose Maya software, it pops up the batch render window. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, I'll just close that now because I don't intend to do a batch render right this second. Let's talk about the common tab. Uh, the first section is color management. Uh, this has to do with color spaces, and we'll talk more about this later when we talk about uh, mental ray and physical sun and sky. For now, we're going to leave this unchecked. File output. This is where you tell Maya what you want your file to be named and what kind of file you want to render out. By default, it will use the scene name to name your file. You can enter anything here that you wish. And by default, it will render out as a Maya IFF. Maya has a lot of options for rendering out. Uh, typical choices are TIFF, uh, Targa, and sometimes JPEG, depending on the application. Uh, the next six options and the next section have to do with rendering multiple frames and how those are named and organized. Uh, I'm not really going to cover most of these because we only render single frames in this class, but a common choice for frame animation extension if you're rendering multiple frames for some reason is name number.ext. This just gives you your file name followed by some frame number and then whatever extension fits that file format. Frame range, this section also deals with rendering more than one frame at a time. You'll do this often in animation, but not generally in the modeling class. In the renderable cameras section, you can choose which cameras in your scene render when you hit batch render. You can render a scene from multiple cameras at the same time. If I wanted to add another camera, I would choose add renderable camera here. Please note that you would have had to have created a camera for that to show up on this list. By default, only the perspective is enabled for this scene. Alpha channel or mask. Turning this on or off lets Maya know whether or not to include an alpha channel with the image. Uh, an alpha channel is just a transparency channel indicating where the image has information and where it's transparent. Uh, please note that not all image formats support alpha channels. JPEGs, for example, do not. TIFFs do, and many other image formats do as well. Depth channel lets you tell Maya whether or not to include a depth channel along with the image that you're rendering. Uh, this is often used in post for things like fog effects or depth of field, uh, things that are expensive to render in 3D but are cheaper to render in 2D. Uh, the next section is image size. This lets you determine how big the image you're rendering out is. Maya has a lot of presets. Uh, the common choices are HD 720 and HD 1080. I tend to use HD 540 for testing. It's big enough to give you an idea of what's happening, but it's not so big that it takes a very long time to render. Uh, the next option is maintain width height ratio. If this is checked and I change one of the numbers in width or height, the other number will change accordingly. next option is to maintain ratio and you have pixel aspect and device aspect. These are radio buttons, one of them has to be checked. Um, it's a little confusing but this option actually refers to these two numbers down here at the bottom. So if I have pixel aspect chosen, 
then my pixel aspect ratio will stay at 1. Uh, this option is here because some video standards use non-square pixels. Uh, we won't really deal with that in this particular class, but that's why this option is here. If I choose device aspect, Maya will change the width and height to match the actual monitor that I'm rendering on. Uh, right now I'm on a, an HD monitor, which has a ratio of 1.7, right? this ratio of 1920 to 1080. Uh, width and height are fields that I can enter any numbers in that I wish and then size units to tell Maya what those numbers mean. By default, it's set in pixels, but I can choose uh, real world units if I want, although I don't really know very many people that use this option. Uh, resolution, uh, I can change how many pixels per inch there are in my finished render. I could change this to pixels per centimeter if I'd like. Please note, however, that changing this doesn't actually make your image any more detailed unless you also change the overall resolution of your image. So if I change this to 300, but I don't change this, I'm just going to have an image that prints very small. This number actually only matters when you print something. In terms of viewing something on screen, this number really doesn't matter. Last two sections, scene assembly and render options, we aren't really going to use in this class. Uh, this is sort of for integration into a bigger animation pipeline. Uh, okay, let's talk about the Maya software tab. I'm just back in my render settings window. There are two main sections to be concerned with here. The first is anti-aliasing quality, the second is ray tracing quality. Let's talk about anti-aliasing quality first. Uh, anti-aliasing is how Maya interpolates the pixels on the edges of objects, uh, and also some of the texture effects on an object as well. Uh, the first option you have here is quality. This contains six presets. You'll probably use these first four most often. Custom lets you this, you pick individual uh, pieces here to determine the quality of various anti-aliasing features. Um, preview quality is for low quality test renders. Intermediate quality is a slightly smoother render. Production quality is just what it sounds like. This is what you'd render out if you were turning in a finished product. Uh, please note that these take longer. Uh, intermediate takes longer than preview. Production takes longer than intermediate. You can also adjust your edge anti-aliasing here. Uh, this is distinct from general anti-aliasing because this deals with specifically the edges of objects, whereas general anti-aliasing also deals with texture effects on objects. You probably don't need to know the specifics of that. Uh, you can probably stick to the quality presets and be just fine. The second section you're going to want to be concerned with is ray tracing quality. If you have shaders in your scene that need reflection or refractions, or you need ray traced shadows, you need ray tracing to be on for those to show up, for those effects to happen. So if I'm using the software render, I have to turn that on. So I then have these three options, reflections, refractions, and shadows with numbers beside of them. These numbers represent the number of bounces a ray can go through, and we can still cause this effect. Uh, so for example, if I had a mirror in my scene, I could see reflected in that mirror an object that was casting a shadow. I would want to make sure that shadows bounced at least twice so that I could see that shadow. If I turn that down too low, the shadow would not reflect in the mirror. It's a fairly subtle thing, but it can make a difference in the scene if you have a lot of reflective objects. Okay, that's the end of my intro to rendering video.